So, anybody believing yet? As in, like, believing? Good morning to you. Good Tuesday morning. I would presume it's a very good Tuesday morning for a lot of folks around here. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports. This is Daily Shot of Penguins. It comes your way bright and early every weekday if you're in two football and or baseball. I also offer daily shots of Steelers and Pirates that I hope you'll check out. Penguins 7, Rangers 2, Penguins with a touchdown and an extra point in each of games 3 and 4 on home ice. And they can, of course, now clinch the series with a Game 5 victory tomorrow night back in New York. And I gotta tell you here, it's one thing if you're stealing games, if you're just kind of getting away with it a little bit. You've got the AHL goalie and a couple of uh, you know, injured guys up front and on the blue line and you're just getting by. But this is not just getting by. This is now four full games of controlling possession. It's four full games of owning all the metrics, old or advanced. And it's also a ton of goals from a ton of different people. Of the seven last night, came from seven different players. The power play got one. The penalty kill was solid again. Louis Domingue is just doing his thing. There's not much to it. His 900 save percentage isn't going to get him any con Smythe consideration no matter how long he stays in, but he's doing enough to win the games. And more than any of that, and I firmly believe this, the Penguins defending, meaning their 200-foot approach to possessing the puck, has been the best we've seen from them since mid-January. But don't take my word from it. Here's what Mike Sullivan had to say. I thought tonight might have been our best effort as far as our play away from the puck. I thought we did a better job at limited some of the odd man rushes. We were on the right side of the puck for for most of the night, uh, you know, trying to make it hard for the Rangers to uh, get quality looks. And, uh, you know, they're, they're a talented team. They've got some dynamic players offensively, and uh, we, we've got to do our best to try to make them work for their for their opportunities. I thought on the defensive side of the puck, it might have been our most complete game uh, of the series, um, but certainly it, it was. A, it, I, I thought it was a solid game on both sides. I asked Sidney Crosby about the team's defending as well. Yeah, I think. You know, I, I would say tonight I'd agree with that. I think, you know, last game when we had a 4-1 lead, I don't know if we'd be saying the same thing. So I think uh, tonight we just backtracked, you know, really well. Uh, we got some big blocks. Um, our penalty kill has been, been solid, I think, especially the last, last couple games. So, um, you know, it's uh, it's playoff hockey. You know, it's a, it's a fine line. And uh, I think the way that we backtracked tonight, it, it definitely helped us in that area. Now, as usual, the captain's pretty forthright there, right? I mean, he could have just said, yeah, we've been awesome, and he didn't. He came back with what you have asked me this after game three. And he's right, because I wouldn't have, principally because of that awful second period. What they've done here is they've brought back that first half version of the Penguins, meaning first half of the regular season. They're all over the rink in the other team's faces, dispiriting them. You know what I'm talking about here? It's not a matter of knocking the snot out of somebody. It's it's knocking the want to out of somebody because you don't have the puck. And if you don't have the puck in hockey, anybody who's participated in this beautiful sport at any level of it will tell you it just deflates you. You don't even feel like you're participating. That's what's happening in this series. This portion of Daily Shot of Penguins is brought to you by the good people at the Greater Pittsburgh Community Food Bank, where they're committed to providing food for all of our neighbors in need across western Pennsylvania. They, in turn, need your help. Find out how $1 can be turned into five full meals for those in need. 
visit pittsburghfoodbank.org. Now, Gerard Gallant, after the game, almost, almost went the full Michelle Terrian on his group, referring to them four total times in his press conference as soft in relation to their performance in this game overall. I don't think he meant like in the bruising sense. I think he meant like that they just didn't put up any battles for the puck, which, by the way, they didn't. Here's Gerard. We got away from it. One goal, two goals. Uh, played soft. We were soft all over the ice. That's the biggest difference. We were soft all over the ice. Okay, so that was only three of the softs. There'd be another one later just for good measure. The thing is, he's no dummy. He knows what's happening. That's because it didn't start last night. It didn't start with this performance, which was the Penguins' best overall of the series. It started with all of the possession that they'd accrued in that Game 1 overtime thriller, when they would record two-thirds of the total shot attempts, when they made Igor Shesterkin aware that there was no chance that he was going to have an easy time in this series. If he was going to win games, he'd have to maintain a 960 save percentage for the duration of it, as opposed to just the first two games. And nobody does that. Nobody's ever done that. So he was due for a correction. The Rangers were due for a correction as long as the Penguins stayed persistent. And they did. And they'll continue to do that. It appears to be in their DNA. It just needed to be revived. What have the Penguins changed strategically since the regular season, including, by the way, the four matchups with the Rangers, only one of which went well? The answer to that is nothing. Sullivan acknowledged that afterward. And I'm sure there's a little tinker here or there. There's something that they try to focus on as it relates to a specific opponent or how do you handle Artemi Panarin coming off the half wall. But the system is the system. It hasn't been modified. The power play is the power play. The PK is the PK. Everything has been the same. And by the way, not just this season, but ever since Sullivan's shown up. All that the Penguins needed to do was to perform that system with the same passion, the same gusto, and somehow the same energy They were, just being blunt here, really lacking over the last two or three months. They've found it. Why? Because it's playoffs. Ask every single guy on this roster, up, down, and sideways, what's happened to them in this series, and they come back with the same answer. It's the playoffs. It's the playoffs. You find that extra gear. This team, that tends to start with Sid. Sid is out of his mind right now. Nine points, and the point totals don't even scratch the surface of his overall impact, never mind his impact on others who are watching him play the way that he is, work the way that he is. So now I'm going to try to pose that same question again, because Tristan Jari's back at, I was going to say practice, not practice, he's he's back to pre-skates. He's out there with Andy Kyoto. Kyoto's taking some soft shots on goal on him. He's going to be back. That much we don't have to guess at anymore. This idea that it was going to be some long-term thing or cost him the playoffs, no. He's back on his skates. He's back between the pipes, even if it's not much. So with that guy in goal, and ideally Ricard Raquel, Brian Dumoulin, And anybody else along the way who goes down, being available to come back, this is a really good hockey team. I'm not going to take it any further than that. It's a really, really good hockey team that, by the way, still has one more game to win to advance out of this round. When we come back, just one question.
And today's J1Q comes from Mark Mydell, who asks, what's made the difference in this series so far? The disparity in the goaltending? Can't believe I'm asking this. Or Sid's line? Um, the disparity in the goaltending doesn't strike me as the answer. Sid's line, having set a persistent, dogged, and productive tone from the very beginning, well, almost the very beginning of Game 1, seems more influential to me out of those two. But I might only be answering that way because I think you were asking the disparity between Domingue and Shesterkin. And again, Louis hasn't been great, all right? Louis's done enough. But if the disparity that you're referencing there is the Vezina version of Shesterkin versus the one we've seen here to date, now we might be talking. I got to tell you, I find it at the same time fascinating and mind-blowing at how Gallant has handled his goaltending in this series. Has the Vezina guy. He knows that. Has seen the Vezina guy at the Vezina guy's best in this very series, in both games one and two, I thought. And I honestly, I still can't bring myself to say that out of these 14 goals that the Penguins have scored over the last two games, that all that many of them were the fault of either of New York's goaltenders. And I know that sounds completely uh, against the grain. And all you'd have to show anyone to shove it back in my face that I'm wrong is Mike Matheson's little softy from the center point that did this little bit of a dance, and it just looked so off from the viewpoint of assessing Shesterkin. But I've really seen this as much more about the Rangers' shaky defense, which is something that I brought up before the series that was going to be a factor if the Penguins could seize upon it if the Penguins could get enough goaltending of their own for it's a matter, et cetera, et cetera. Remember, I'm the guy who picked Rangers in five here, so I'm not about to go boasting about pre-series predictions, all right? I did bring up this shaky defense of theirs. They have a couple of guys that are pretty good. One of them won a Norris Trophy last year, although I kind of question why that would have happened, but whatever. They have been, collectively, lousy defensively. And I don't know that that's even an opinion. So how does Gallant handle this? Well, in both games three and four, he pulled Shesterkin. And he brought in Alexander Georgiev. Georgiev has, in both cases, markedly outperformed Shesterkin. He was, anybody who saw the third period last night, really sharp, especially with the blocker side, which for whatever reason the Penguins just kept repeatedly aiming at. And in fact, the only goal Georgiev would give up would be to Evgeny Malkin in total garbage time. It was the seventh goal. And you're watching that. I'm watching that from the press box, and I'm sitting there thinking what everyone else is. This is absolutely your Game 5 starter. So you go downstairs, Gallant meets with the media, calls his guy soft and whatever else, and tells everyone that Shesterkin is going to be their Game 5 starter, not Georgiev. Now, is that a case of the coach wanting really hard to not be wrong, as opposed to just doing the best thing he possibly can to win a back-against-your-wall elimination game? You know, it might be. Because Gallant was the same guy who said at the morning skate yesterday that he expected Shesterkin will be, and I quote directly, great tonight, end quote. That was about as lousy a prediction as the one I made before the series. Maybe worse. And that's always dangerous territory for a coach or manager in any sport because you, you're more focused on wanting to have your initial decision be right than adjusting to the one that probably is right. 
And for Gallant to do that in the immediate aftermath of this game makes it feel even more like that. Do you know what I'm saying? I mean, why wouldn't he just say, hey, we got to give it some time or, you know, there's no hurry here. Game five is until Wednesday at 7, 10 p.m. I'll let you guys all know at 7.09 who my starter is. Is it because he's worried about Igor's psyche? Is it? Ooh, how about this? Is it? that he doesn't think Igor can win on the road where he's being taunted, that he can only win in New York where he's loved. How about that, huh? Fun stuff. You may throw out another fun concept your way before we call it a day here. Imagine the fans at Madison Square Garden trying to do a derisive chant aimed at Louis. Just imagine this. It would be one of the most remarkable cases of a crowd actually building up the confidence and ego of a goaltender by trying to get him rocked. Because you're picturing, like, here's Louie, right? Louie is in this building, the world's most famous arena, with all these rabid humans. And he's just up from the AHL. No one even thinks he belongs at this level. And Really, I'm going to keep saying this, he hasn't you know, been exceptional. But if they're chanting your name, they think you're worth trying to get off your game. You know? Wow, fun stuff. Anyway, I'm flying over to New York to do game five. We'll do another daily shot of Penguins tomorrow to talk all about that from up there. Thanks so much for the question. Thanks to everyone for listening. And, uh, yeah.